Hi there. I'm just going to provide a brief introduction to scientific illustration for those of you who haven't had much um, familiarity with it or are learning to transfer your art skills uh, to scientific illustration. So, of course, humans have been um, capturing their world through art for a really long time. Um, here we have what they think is maybe one of the oldest cave paintings from Sulawesi, Indonesia, about 39,000 years ago. It's a little bit hard to see, but there are stencils of hands down in the bottom left, and then um, some images of some pigs um, in the kind of upper right hand corner. Um, this is much older than this cave in France, um, where you can see just some really neat gesture drawings of um, maybe lions or a bear. Um, and these are thought to be about 30,000 to 28,000 BC. Um, so we've been making marks on the world for a really long time, right? Um, it wasn't until the advent invention of paper and then the development of some of our printing abilities that we were able to really kind of capture images more easily. So these are some of the first botanical illustrations from the 5th to 7th century um, in these herbals from Europe that were capturing kind of medicinal plants. Um, but you can see they, they're kind of flat. The plants look like they've been kind of squashed. Um, probably were, they're probably drawing from pressed plants. Here's a picture from Leonardo da Vinci of a bush cranberry. So you can see a little bit better perspective and some depth coming into this drawing from 1450s, 1500s. Um, and then this is a woodblock uh, print. So now we have the capacity to reproduce illustrations through woodblock printing. And this is 1633. But again, you've got, <laughs> you've got some issues with perspective on the bananas. Um, but um, but this is all kind of an uh, the evolution of our ability to capture images, right? So here you can see some images from the 1700s of saffron. Um, so illustration is specifically helpful in terms of identifying, especially species of plants, birds, and insects, and really nothing compares to drawings. Um, systematics relies really heavily on scientific illustration because photographs will never be an appropriate replacement. Um, you can't highlight um, things and isolate factors as well as you can with drawing. So illustrators are able to highlight certain anatomical parts that are really crucial to identification. And that's why it's so important to learn, learn to do a little scientific illustration. So the steps in illustrating, um, I'm just gonna ask you to pause the video and go get a piece of paper, like a white piece of paper and a pencil, just a regular number two pencil, not a mechanical pencil if you can help it, and not a piece of paper with lines if you can help it. Um, so once you have your paper, um, we're going to do some kind of warm up exercises and just kind of help you get loose and then start thinking about how to how to draw what you're seeing. Um, first of all, drawing is really about seeing um, about 50% of drawing is learning how to see. Um, and in fact, knowing too little or too much about your specimen can be an impediment and it can bias your drawing. So I want you to kind of find something that you want to draw it can just be a pen or, you know, a plant or whatever. And I want you to really look at it, look at the patterns and angles and curves and the shapes and what you see and the shapes of the space that's left behind around the object. And then I want you to just kind of warm up your pencil and your arm and spend some time making some lines and some curves and some hatches and using different hand positions. You can see a lot of people hold the pencil like this when they're drawing, but you can try to hold it in other ways um, to get the most comfortable hand position for illustrating. And then we're going to start you with, uh, and you might just want to pause the video as you go. So I'm just going to introduce a few kind of warm up techniques. The first is blind contour drawing. It really helps you to connect your hand to your eye. And so you would hold your object over here and you'd put your hand, your pencil hand down on the paper and you would walk, you would walk with your eye across the, the edge of the object that you're trying to draw and kind of pretend like you're an ant and you're walking along the object and then try to reproduce that with your hand without looking at your drawing hand. So this is a way to connect your hand and your eye together. So um, that's the first one. So pause while you try a blind contour drawing. Um, and so here's some just instructions, basically the things that I just talked about. 
Then I want you to work on what's called a gesture drawing. And so gesture drawing is meant to capture movement. And this can be a little bit more difficult, but if you have a pet in your house, it can be really fun to sit around and try to capture the movements that your pet is making, um, especially a quick pet, like a lizard or a bird or something like that. And so um, this is just, again, to kind of get you warmed up. But the gesture drawing is trying to capture a gesture really quickly. So if you have a person in your household, you can look at them and you can try to capture the shape. You know, how are they sitting at the table or how are they standing at the sink, right? So now you can look at your paper and gesture drawing, but you're gonna be quick. So maybe time yourself, maybe only spend 20 seconds trying to capture the gesture. So you pause the video and practice a few gesture drawings. And then um, coming back to your original specimen, it's a good idea to make a few gesture drawings really quickly from several different angles until you decide on the one that you like and that you'll spend more time doing your illustration with. And then I'm just gonna go through a few, a few ideas for adding a little depth to your drawing. So you can start with lines, right? So just draw the outlines and then you can use a Q-tip or your finger to kind of smudge and give some shading. So shading should progress from dark to light you can keep white areas white until the very end. Um, you can use your eraser to highlight white aspects if you'd like. You can also use what are called contour lines. And this gives depth to your drawing where you have thicker lines. They're actually closer to your eye and thinner lines recede into the background or even broken lines. So you can try that method for giving a little depth to your drawing after you have the shape sketched out. There's lots of different kinds of hatching. There's straight lines, there's contour hatching, cross hatching, and scumbling. So you can try a lot of different types of um, giving just kind of like some, again, some more depth to your drawing. And then there's stippling. And stippling, you can use a Sharpie or in another kind of an ink pen to basically draw dots of different sizes or different densities to give some depth to your drawing. So here's just some examples of a stippled drawing showing the underside of a leaf and a close-up. So you can use some really neat kind of close-up techniques, um, pop-outs to provide some highlights. And then here's some comparisons of some different types of um, methods side by side. So you can see what would a white ball on a white table look like using these different methods. And then just lastly, you know, when you're drawing something, it's always good to block out the major shapes before you start so you don't run off the page. I've seen a lot of students draw these amazingly detailed drawings and they get started and then they run out of room. So it's always good to start with kind of the shape that, you know, a blocked shape that you want to start with. So here's some examples, you know, you might draw the basic shapes of something and then make sure you have enough space on your paper um, and then you start adding the details. So a skilled scientific illustrator can clarify multiple focal depths and overlapping layers and emphasize important details, things that are really unattainable by photography. And um, sometimes illustration is a collaboration between a scientist and an illustrator, unless you happen to be both. So by the end of this program, hopefully you'll have had a lot of experience um, trying to draw. Again, you're not being graded on your drawing or your art skills at all, but really on your ability to try to you know, practice, get a little bit better and really put some time and energy into it. So try to make your drawings to scale. You know, don't make, try to make them all at the same magnification. Um, block out your shapes, use a ruler if you want to make some measurements on your specimen, and then you can add little scale bars um, to your drawing that can be really useful. You can also use the magnification of your microscope in your drawing, include a little note that says drawn at 22X. So here's some examples of pieces of a plant kind of broken out. You can see lots of little details and then you can see little scale bars of different sizes for the different parts of the plant. So have fun. This is an illustration of a hovel, which is basically a collection of debris um, alongside a river. When a river goes into flood, debris gets caught in branches and then all that debris becomes really interesting habitat for a variety of creatures. So it turns out hovels um, have much higher colonization by spiders and other types of riparian habitats. And this was published in the journal Wetlands in 2006. So this was a challenging drawing project, my only published illustration. I wouldn't say that it has a scale bar or uh, anything like that, but um, anyway, it was fun. So I hope that you have a great time.